As high school students, we've got a lot of school spirit. And when we compete in athletics, that spirit goes through the roof. Our pride runs deep. And sometimes competitions can get messy. But our friends and competitors all deserve a safe environment. That's why this season and every season, we're committed to competing with class. It's not okay to taunt, trash, or throw shade at our opponents. We don't play that way. As players and as fans, this is the way we play the game. We build up our teams. We respect officials. And we give props to the other team, even if they beat us. We are not alone. Our high school coaches, administrators, and staff are committed to confronting and eliminating bad behaviors. Because insensitive, offensive, and hateful behavior has no place in our high school or in our activities. Everyone has a role to play. So whether we are at home or away, join our school communities. As we show everyone, this is the way we play the game. Anoka Hennepin fans, whether you cheer for the Huskies, Cardinals, Bengals, Rebels, or Tornadoes, let's stay above the line. Tonight, it's Andover Huskies basketball. As the boys take on Rogers, who Rogers comes in with a mark of 4-12. and Andover, 11-5. and Andover led, of course, by the dynamic duel of Musungu, averaging 18 a game, and Kopetsky at 26 a game. Huskies are pushing, trying to get that win streak to five in a row. Meanwhile, for Rogers, trying to get that defense ready as they've lost their last nine. Coming up next, it's the Andover Huskies taking on Rogers and boys high school basketball. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, oh, yes. Yes. Goes out of the yes. The Andover Huskies win their first state championship. Steve Thompson, Joe Rulin, our great QCTV crew at Andover on a chilly night tonight. It's warm inside, and Andover's on a roll. They'll take now, on a struggling Rodgers team beginning. tonight. But Joe, for, for Andover, it's, a, it's about continuing to get better. They are favored to win this game tonight, but it is about getting better. We know what they can do offensively, but about getting better defensively as they head down the stretch. Absolutely, they are looking for their fifth win in a row, but they know as the playoffs begin, it's the better defensive teams that progress, and they're gonna look at the Rogers starting lineup led by head coach Addison Tackman in this first season. With Colm, Deluge, Fuller, Watson, and Kazmer Koski are the starters for Rodgers once again. Four and 12 on the year. They've dropped nine in a row, two and seven in conference play. And now we're looking at the Andover Huskies. Landon Nelson 
a moment ago as Andover, as Joe mentioned, 11 and 5 overall, 8 and 1 in conference play, tied for second with Maple Grove right behind Park Center. And here's those Andover starters. To get a look here at uh, Sam Lucinda, one of the starters, he's averaging 18 a game. To, of course, Ben Kapetsky averaging 26. He's also averaging. Uh, seven assists a game and six rebounds as well. He'll be heading to Concordia St. Paul to play some basketball there next season. Meanwhile, Chase Pemberton has been an excellent surprise. He's been shooting now 40% from behind three, and he comes in uh, with an average of eight a game, but uh, sticking up and playing some well. Tate Johnson goes to the middle tonight and playing some center. He'll bang it around a bit, and the uh, rest of it, as you mentioned, Landon Nelson. I call him the quiet scoring whisper because he's averaging 12 points a game six rebounds he just gets the job done and every night he means to contribute in, in an immense amount of way and then of course coming off the bench right away you'll see baraka tarleton also some good height and some athleticism as well and we are underway tap controlled by andover chase pemberton was in the middle ben kopetsky Hands to Sam Masungu. Combined, as Joe mentioned, for 44 and a half points a game this year for Andover. Pretty impressive. Masungu swings it around. Kopetsky goes to the far corner. Masungu looks at a three, gets it down low. Back out into the near corner. They tap it around. Landon Ells gets a touch. Good D to start. Rogers, uh, head coach. Also mentioned, hey, we you need Coach Dackman, who was an assistant coach for seven years and the head coach now and the runner and the floater right there by Nelson to start it off. 2-0 and over the lead, and Rogers gets the ball there in white, and their leading scorer, Blake Deluge. He's had a nice season, the junior. Rogers averaging 51 a game, and over on the flip side, over 80 a game. So Rogers would love to throw this one or slow this one down. There's a reverse layup by Fuller. No good. Rebound. Kopetsky on the run into the lane. Spins. Puts up a tough shot. And the board comes down to Watson for Rogers. Watson's a thick center player. Runs the floor well. How about that? Right on cue, Joe. 2 2 Watson. And then he knocks it away. The big guy bats it away. He really runs the floor. Sturdy player, but we saw it. Getting back on defense, and Rodgers is going to need to do that to stay in the game here tonight against a heavily favored Andover team, number of 11 in the latest basketball news poll in 4A. Kopetsky in the corner gets bumped, swings it out on top. That's Tate Johnson. Kopetsky gets it back. Ball handling out there in front of the Rodgers bench. Johnson again in the corner, long no good, and the board comes down to Fuller. Rogers in transition. Deluge into the paint. Gives it up. It's Watson. Deluge back. Both teams coming out man to man, but their mission, we got to play better defense. Fuller, a little leaner from 10 right of the lane. Nice bucket. Rogers, the early lead. Yeah, we got there pretty easily to a great shooting location. And as you mentioned, just lofted that in. Landon Nelson, three ball, no, tapped around. Watson tapped it, and it's grabbed neatly there by Pemberton. They get it outside. Landon Nelson loses his footing. And back the other way comes Rogers on the break, and then it's stolen away by Masungu. Tapped ahead. Here's Kopetsky all the way to the block. Put it up. No, the follow. No. Down on the block. Johnson tried to put it back, and I think we're going to get our first foul of the game. No, just out of bounds play. Tate Johnson with a nice follow-up tip. I thought he was going to get rewarded for it. Just rimmed out. Landon Nelson, three left side. That's an air ball. That's going to go out of bounds. Rogers ball, and they have the lead. As I mentioned, for the Huskies, they've won their last four. Their three losses have come to a couple of losses to Hopkins and then a loss to Maple Grove. Deluge, no, and the rebound Landon Nelson. Hands to Kopetsky in transition. Spot up three. Got it. 
Kopetsky leading the team in three-pointers made. That's now 37 on the year for him. His high for the season came in the first game of the season, 46 against Lakeville South. Masungu almost stole it away. By the way, Kopetsky along two. They change it to a two. We're tied at four. Here's Watson missing the bunny, getting it back from Nelson. Kicks it outside. Whitcomb's three, no. Board to Fuller. No, and then finally Landon Nelson. Hill outlet. And here comes Masungu into the front court left side. Kicks it across, threw it away. Boy, I tell you, Landon Nelson has been working triple time. <laughs> he was down there battling, trying to get that board. He got uh, an initial one, but then he got into a battle, taken away. And uh, Rogers had three or two offensive rebounds in three different sets on that possession. Here's Deluge. Swings it out. Here's Fuller. Back to Kazmer Koski, and he traveled. Turnover on Rodgers. And, uh, of course, Huskies need a lot of help on those boards. Nelson just, I mean, everything comes to him, batteries included. He's just a thorough player, football team. He was a quarterback, about to six foot four. Hey, he's had a high of 12 rebounds against Hopkins earlier this year. Kopetsky over to the left. This is Pemberton. And he knocks down the three. That is a nice stroke. And head coach Jeremy Havel reminded me before the game, he's now shooting 40% from behind the perimeter. Good looking shot. Down on the deck. Watson picks it up. Masungu there. They get it underneath. Whitcomb up and in. Nice bucket there by Easton Whitcomb. It's 7 6 with 13.20 to go in this first half. Here's Ben Kopetsky. Kopetsky, top of the key. Switching up D a little bit. Rodgers on that trip back. Three ball, top of the key, got it! Kopetsky, Kopetsky finally gets the three. He has five to lead all, 10-6. He had that long two earlier. Here's a runner, Deluge, nice shot. Deluge first bucket. Averaging 17 a game, as you mentioned, Steve gets his first two, a nice runner. There's Masungu into the front court, tries to work off a pick, tries to go around the corner, stolen away by Watson. He'll grab it, give it up to Deluge, and Blake Deluge will bring it into the front court, work off a Watson pick, over to the left, almost throw it away, knocked down by Kazmer Koski, and now it's Whitcomb. They get it out on the wing, Fuller three, no rebound fought for. Good job, Kazmer Koski. Put it up and in. I feel they are out working Andover on the board. The six foot three sophomore took that away from Pemberton and then cashed it in for the bank. All five starters have a bucket for Rogers, and there's Kopetsky on a drive, and he's got seven already. Saw the seam down the lane and cashed it in. 12 to go, first half. Deluge hands it off. This is Fuller. Now they get it off into the right corner. Kasper Koski. They like to run that dribble drive. And before the game, Addison Tackman, the coach, said, we like to get the rebound and go. We want to pick up our pace. Whitcomb driving in. Hit a tough shot. He has four to lead Rodgers. We're tied at 12 again. He also said, I want to make sure we're not just running up and down the court. Losing possessions, we need to value the possession each time down, and that time they work the offense to a tee. Nelson right side, three no, tapped around, grabbed by Rodgers. Board to Fuller. Fuller is going to bring it over the timeline, the big A in the middle of the floor. He'll try and drive in, give it up to Watson at the line. Now on the left, Whitcomb a three, and he got it. Whitcomb has seven, and Rodgers the lead right back. They're playing well early. Hey, a team that's just averaging 51 a game versus the Huskies, who are averaging 81 a game. Rodgers has pounced out front early. Kopetsky off from the left. Landon Nelson drives in. Triple team gets it out of there. Here's Pemberton. Now Masungu, he'll drive in. Layup, beautiful drive by Sam Masungu, first bucket. He just froze the defender with that fake. He looked like he was going to just tee up on a three, found a lane, and got his first two of the game. Did Musungu averaging 18 a game. Fuller tried to kick it out to the near side. 
turnover on Rodgers. And now subs coming into the game, 10-27 to go, half number two. A battalion or of substitutions. And Tarleton, Baraka Tarleton, of course, he'll be playing soccer at the D1 level next year. A six foot five senior, bringing you some length and athleticism. Also, uh, returning back in there for the Huskies. Down There's below. A shot up on, on the left, no good. Tapped out of there, and the board comes down to Rogers. Eli Cespedes with the board. Here comes the Rogers Royals in white. Little backdoor cut, Zach Kane. They keep it alive. Deluge three, got it. Deluge has five. They're up 18-14. Quickly the other way, Masungu with three, no, and the board comes down to Whitcomb for Rodgers. Royals have the lead in the ball by four, driving down the lane. Whitcomb lost the handle, and Cespedes put it up and in. And now it's Rodgers by six. Well, Rodgers is out hustling, and it looks like they want that ball. Nice look down low, turnaround, up and in by Luke Denneke. First points off the bench for Andover, 20 to 16. Denneke, 6'4", junior, I'll tell you, the kid has got some athleticism to him and, and he has sprouted as well. Good flow. Mix, traveled, got it on his knee and then took an extra step. Turnover on Rodgers and it'll be Andover ball. Ben Kopetsky on the floor and he'll get it in. And it's Sam Masungu. These guys rarely come out of the game. And you may remember state quarterfinals, Target Center. They took eventual 4A champ Park Center to the absolute limit in that quarterfinal. Kopetsky three ball, nothing but net. And he has 10. Pure cash, man. It was a pure looking three pointer, nothing but pure nylon. They tried to come to the near side. Fuller throws it out of bounds. Had a chance when I said this pregame to talk to the head coach uh, Tackman and a timeout here for Rogers. Take a quick look at the standings here in the Northwest Suburban Conference as teams are now beyond the midway mark of their schedule. In fact, I think there's about eight games left for Andover. Here's a look, Park Center at 9-0. and Andover second, tied with Maple Grove and also Tatino Grace, all Three of them at eight and one. Blaine five and four, and Robbinsdale Armstrong, a tough team. Uh, four and five, followed by Osseo. Spring Lake Park, Champlin Park, three and four. And then you see the remainder. Centennial struggling this year at one and eight. Rogers at two and seven. Tackman, the head coach for the Rogers, said, you know, we were playing Park Center well, and we were only down by one, 31-30, and then they went on a run the second half and put up 30 straight points on us. And we just got tired and they just banged us around. And we've got to get more physical. And we also just have to focus well on that defense. You get a look there at the top 4A as well. Get to those here. So the game's back in play. Back to action and over the ball out of the timeout. They swing it around the perimeter. They're trying to work it inside to Tarleton. He has a dribble into the corner, stops. They get it to the outside. And then we got to travel on the drive for the Andover Huskies. And I don't see a 40 on the roster. I don't either. I, I think what they did, they may have a jersey switch, but I think that might be Bagali, Cameron Bagali. So I don't have a 40 on the official roster. Out top of the key, there's a three, and a made three by Zach Kane. Their third made three. 23-19, Kopetsky at the line, dribbles out of there, and resets Masungu. Drives into the paint, good defense on him. Double team comes, swings it out in the corner. Tart long two. And he nails it. Averaging almost five a game, Tarleton. 6'5", senior, has his first two tonight. Masungu tried to steal. I think he did get the steal. And the foul is going to go on Fuller, his first. First foul of the game was 7.37 to go here in half number one, Joe. That is shocking. Musungu is going to take a bench and in. Looks like it's Von Stingy. Four and over. 
Yeah, that is an anomaly. First foul with seven and a half now to play the first. This could be a Begali. There's a three. Up, no, rebound, fought for. And finally coming out of there is Rodgers and Fuller. Uh, Kopetsky missed the three near corner. Another three, rattles around and drops. Shooter's touch for Kane. He has two made three. And Rodgers leads it by five. Got the members roll. And there's a three. And it is Begali, according to PA announcer Pete Anderson. I believe him back the other way in a travel driving to the hole by Cespedes. Good looking three by Cameron Begali, averaging almost four a game. I'm gonna write down 40 in my book. Yeah, that puts uh, instead was, of the 24. I was trying to look for it myself. I, I wonder if it's in the laundry or where it is, 645. <laughs> this is Kopatsky. Drives in, spins into the paint, kicks it out. Three ball on the way, nothing but net for Von Strenge. Lights it up, he is season high is 11 against Robinson, Robinsdale. Cooper, a foul, whistled. Yeah, Kopetsky drives in and draws the foul, and they're gonna inbound near side. Foul on Kane, that'll be the second on Rodgers. None yet on Andover in the game. 6.26 to go in the half. Kopetsky into the backcourt, plenty of room. Tarleton wheels, quick three, no. And the rebound ripped down there. Nice board by Fuller. Rogers into the front court. Fuller kicks it out on the wing to Whitcomb. Fuller gets it in the corner. Now out on top. This is Kane. Left corner. Whitcomb short. Rebound to Cespedes. Right back to Kane is three, no good. They got a good look. And now Kopetsky into the front court. Yep, the key offensive rebound to sustain that possession. Down the lane, scoop, got the bucket through the foul. What a great body control by Ben Kopetsky. He has 12. Uh, well, the six foot senior is, I'll tell you, find some creative ways to release that ball and matriculate his way through traffic in that time with the scoop. Off the glass. Landon Nelson back on the floor. And one thing Jeremy Hamble does, he really uses his bench. I mean, he, he gets a lot of guys on the floor. Kopetsky to complete the three-point play, and that one over the front and down. He has 13 to lead all, and Andover up by four. Absolutely. Well, you want to keep... Want to keep them fresh, but you also want to get them that playing time before the postseason begins. Extensive playing time. By the way, 9-0 run. Abbas is now in the game for Andover. Whitcomb works it into Watson. They swing it around on the perimeter. Fuller tries to back in. Now it's out to Deluge. Deluge to the elbow, stops the dribble, cut her down the lane, Whitcomb, and I think he got fouled. First foul is going to go on... Sam Abbas, I believe. But I tell you, if you could no, just. No, it's going to be Landon Nelson. If sorry. you could put like a GoPro on the top of that hoop and watch Landon Nelson as he's moving from one side of the lane to the other, trying to keep an eye on the big fella for Rogers in that post, number 20. Watson, and he comes over to try to help as well. Whenever up. Uh, just that, that possession, it was really illustrated. A make and a miss, 30 to 27, and over Whitcomb has eight. Sungu, top of the key, goes into the lane, gets bumped. Got bumped by a couple of Rogers Royals there. Let's see who they call the foul on. And it's going to be on Whitcomb. And number two on him, 14 foul for Rogers. It was the one that probably was actually, if they're going to call it, it was probably on uh, Kaz Murkowski instead. But uh, nonetheless, three whistled full of that foul for Rodgers. They get it across. Three ball on the way. Off the rim, no good. Masungu trying to fight for the rebound. Tips it out to Andover. Back underneath, stolen away. Deluge was there, got to it 
before Landon Nelson. Under five to go in the half. Out on the wing, Kazmer Kowski. And it's tipped out of bounds. I think getting a hand on over there was Strange. Pemberton comes in. Bagali will take a bench. Stay in that man-to-man -man defense, both of these teams. Rogers, a little bit of counter defense, a couple of possessions, but otherwise the same man-to-man -man and one for him. And Deluge drives into the paint, draws a foul. He has seven. Well, and he'll have a chance to tie the game here. Steve, you got a last name, Deluge. It's not like you can just uh, sprinkle in a couple of points every now and then. You've got to hit a deluge of points, don't you? And isn't that like barrage? You had to go there. <laughs> Send uh, your emails to Joe Ruland <laughs> at QCTV. That's right. Deluge at the line, and he knocks it down, and he has eight points. And we are tied at 30. 4.43 to go, and head coach Addison Tackman Rogers has to be thrilled with this on the road at number 11 Andover, tied at 30 with under five to go in the half. They have played well. They've had some good looks in this game. And now near the block, little fadeaway. Masungu, no. Watson got the board and then got fouled by Andover. Hmm. And coming in on the foul is Sam Abbas and... So Abbas will get number two there. A little fade away that time by Musunga. Head coach uh, Dackman for Rogers. Played some high school ball at Rogers or in Rochester and then played college football at St. John's. Whitcomb has it picked off. Pass picked off. Pemberton drives in to the paint, put it up and in. Well, Pemberton did it all there. He's got five. And over the lead back. Pemberton just looks more and more comfortable each game. They get it into Watson. Watson from Kazmierkowski. And he has four, and we're tied again. Now South Paul just snaps that one in from point blank range. Sungo on top. Down in the corner, driving in. Johnson lost it. On the break the other way, Kane. Kane gives it up, driving in. Deluge the bucket. Deluge has double figures. Good focus by Deluge. Almost going for that strip with Kopetsky. He had enough to pull back, alter the shot, and get that layup. Ben Kopetsky at the elbow stops. Rips it across. Nelson. 3-0. Rebound comes down to Pemberton up and in. Pemberton a good sequence. He has seven. I'll tell you, and Pemberton looks so fluid out there, so smooth, and the junior getting more and more confidence with each possession. Pemberton on the season averaging five, excuse me, eight points a game, five rebounds. His season high this year was 17. 17 against Coon Rapids, and he's third on the team with 29 made three-pointers. Ben Kopetsky leading the way for Andover in this one with 13. Blake Deluge with 10 leading the way for Rodgers, 3.16 to go. And it was 26-21 Rodgers, and over on court to nine, will run to grab the lead back. But, you know, Rodgers has been hanging in there in this one. You got to give him credit. Yeah, and uh, hey, Rodgers is bouncing back. They just came off a 103-78 loss to Spring Lake Park. That was the third time that uh, Rodgers had surrendered 100 plus points on the season so it looks like they've done a great job of making some corrections prior to the last game fuller over to whitcomb whitcomb trying to drive turned away by tate johnson whitcomb has it back he'll try and drive into the paint all the way put up a shot miss it rebound tapped around finally grabbed by john pemberton now it's masungu double team comes and they're going to call it a charge on sam masungu I think he got airborne and ran over somebody, and that is indeed the call. First foul on Sam, and the fourth on Andover, and team falls are even now. Yeah, definitely a uh, charge called by the official, and Akron won the Huskies. Meanwhile, we talked about what Jeremy Gable, Havel, excuse me, was trying to really work on that defense. They've had three consecutive halves 
of holding opponents to 30 points or less. Unfortunately, that snap here in the first half, they're at 34 is Rodgers. Whitcomb out on the wing, Kaz Murkowski. He's going to drive in, stop, kick it back out. Cespedes, short, long rebound, Kopetsky. He'll dribble out of there. Look at a three, skip it across. Masungu knocks down the high one. He'll drive in all the way to the hole. Missed the layup, and the rebound ripped out of there by Kane. Kane will give it up on the wing. Get it back down the lane. Scoop, <laughs> no. And the rebound picked off by Pemberton. He throws it away. Back at it. Kazmer Koski lays it up and in. He has four, and Rodgers the lead. That's like what you named the move. Kazmer Koski type of move. Fade away from 15 on the left. Missed by Minton Kopetsky and Rodgers on the break. Kazmer Koski. Reverse layup. He has four in a row. Six in the game. They lead by four. Same song. Different verse. A reverse layup. He's got that shot down. And uh, the last four points here for Rodgers. Here's Landon Nelson to the free throw line. Turned away. Kopetsky swings it across. There's Pemberton. Now Masungu. And over standing around quite a bit on offense at the moment. Kopetsky drives in over in the corner. Pemberton had it partially blocked. And the board to Whitcomb. Whitcomb's going to bring it the other way. Landon Nelson stole it. Yes, he did. He saves to Pemberton. On the break, Masungu drives in. Nice move for the layup. Made the adjustment that time instead of trying to go over top of the defender, just a crossover dribble. And a layup completed there for Musungu. And then Rodgers turns it over again. So after a sequence that saw Andover a little discombobulated, uh, Rodgers gives them some momentum. Huskies the ball down by two. Under a minute to go. Masungo on the left, quick three, out no good. Nelson the board, no. Rebound out to Kopetsky, another three. He got it. He has 16. And I don't think he's missed a three tonight. And over by one, under 40 to go on the half, driving in. Deluge, no. Nelson couldn't handle the board out of bounds. Rodgers gets a break. Well, quite a half. Three made threes for Kopetsky. 16 points. Deluge once again leading. He'll get the catch. Work it inside Cespedes. On the block against Nelson. Up no good. Great defense by Landon Nelson. Yep, just squared up on him. Tarleton the board. Ahead to Musungu. Wing right. And now under 20 to go on the half. And right out in front of the scorer's table is Ben Kopetsky. They're going to come up on 10. And let's see what they do here. They're trying to give him some room. He's going to drive at the elbow. Jumper up. Off no good. And we got a push foul. And that's going to go on Tarleton. With 1.9 to go, Rodgers will get the ball. Oh, that's going to go on Landon Nelson. Wow. Hmm. I thought it would be on Tarleton for sure. But anyway, Rodgers has the ball. Down by one with 1.9 to go in the half. Denneke quickly comes in for Nelson. They'll get it ahead from half court. No. And we have played one half. Ben Kopetsky, the story for Andover. He's had a big half. And Deluge, double figures with 10 points for Rodgers, but the Royals hanging right in here. Well, 39-38, that's not exactly the score that's on the monitor right now. Maybe they're, they're predicting. That's that that is done. a dreaded glitch That's a progressive, there. That, that's a prognostication. Both teams had said, we want to work on our D. We've got to work on our D. And I know Coach Habel had said, hey, three consecutive halves, we've held our opponents to 30 points or less. And that's our goal, but so far in this first half, uh, that offense has found some gaps, and the Huskies are up by one, 39-38. We will take a break, stick around. Half number two on the way here on QCTV.
Welcome to our winter edition of At The Half, the show where we take a closer look at some of our area high school sports. I'm your host, Chuck Stenz. Andover Boys and Girls Hockey look to capitalize on their outstanding dual state championships last year in order to continue their success into this season. Let's talk with the head coaches from both teams to see what the teams have to bring. I'm Melissa Volk and this is my 10th year at Andover. Uh, our expectations are kind of similar every single year to be getting better, you know, as the season goes and be playing our best hockey come February. You know, we're a year older, you know, last year we were super young with so many freshmen on the team and, and now kids are kind of filling some different roles and, and kind of figuring it out this year. Our captains, um, Ella Berger, Issa Gettle, Maddie Brown, um, that top line of ours, and then also Kaylin Mom back at D, Courtney Segman, our, goal, our goalie, but then a lot of other players that fill some huge roles for us and give us that depth that we need. Yeah, so every game, you know, we kind of get excited for and another opportunity to play with our teammates and whatnot. Uh, but tomorrow we play Minnetonka, so that's a big game. Um, and then uh, we're in the Dinah tournament at, after Christmas. Yeah, uh, we love our youth girls. We're so um, lucky to know all of them on such an individual basis. But, you know, the biggest thing that we preach here is just working hard and having a good attitude. My name is Mark Manny. I'm the head coach of the boys hockey team at Andover High School. Well, last year's team, uh, a lot of our skill up front was underclassmen, and when you have underclassmen leading your team uh, on offense, uh, they don't feel the pressure that seniors feel, so they tend to kind of play loose and, and, uh, and play very well. Seniors sometimes uh, you know, get the feeling it might be their last game if they lose, and, and sometimes that leads to not playing well. So um, we had the perfect combo last year of great senior leaders who were calm under pressure and juniors who played free. Uh, we'll see what we have this year. Uh, our best players are going to be seniors this year and, and sometimes, like I say, that, uh, that's not a great recipe and sometimes it is. Um, so we hope our young guys get better uh, every game and then we get good leadership and uh, I, I think this team will be pretty good by the end of the year. Well, up front, our, our three big guys are, are uh, Gavin Thorson, uh, Caden Casey and uh, Cooper Conway. Um, uh, Kate, uh, Casey and Thorson both had over 70 points last year. Conway was uh, hurt about half the year, so he had uh, a few, his offensive numbers didn't look quite as impressive, but uh, they're gonna be our leaders up front. Uh, throw in uh, uh, senior Mac Yell, uh, and we're looking for big things offensively from him and junior Ben Dahl as well. And after that, uh, we're gonna see who steps forward and kind of takes the mantle and run, runs. Um, on the backside, uh, Tristan May Robinson, uh, senior captain who's uh, been a stalwart for us for two years now and uh, we'll be again for a third and then Landon String fellow a junior who played a regular shift last year and it's getting better by the day. Um, back in uh, the net we lost Austin Bronze who was probably the best goalie in Minnesota last year. Um, so we're just looking for who's going to step forward and take that job. We've got four very capable goalies and any of them could be our starter by the end of the year. The Tornadoes have some new dedicated members of their cheerleading squad. Let's check in with them to learn some more. I started coaching this year. I used to coach at a different school for an elementary competitive team, so this is kind of a switch up, but I really like it. My name is Jordan Waldinger, and I've been coaching here for four years. I'm gonna be going on five. I came here to be the assistant coach just right after I graduated high school, so I've been here for, for a bit. Last year was kind of rough for us. We had a lot of drama. A lot of issues, but I feel like this year we have the most committed and hardworking team that I I've personally ever seen. have ever seen. Yeah. yeah, we are some of this is some of the most hardworking girls I've ever met. They are so committed, they want to win, they want to be here every day, they want to put in the work and they want to get that bid. I think there's just more more energy, more more effort. So I just think uh, this team is just miles different than it was last year. They just—they want to be here. I can tell they want to be here. They want to put in the work. They're putting in work outside of practice. Yeah, the yeah. drive is the drive is really mm -hmm. good. I enjoy. It. We learned from our middle school coaches that were old Anoka cheerleaders that learned different ways and different techniques and stuff. And um, basically, when we got our new coach Caitlin, she brought in some new um, cheers that she did with her old team. Also cheers that she had learned in high school herself. Yeah. So uh, yeah, cheers end up kind of just being a big collaboration of what ends up working for the team and like what we like the most. 
our pyramids that we do in our competitive routine, we have performed them at football games just to kind of practice mm -hmm. it in front of a crowd. Yeah. And we've done it at we've done a couple of routines at Pet Fest. I think um, I think games that we cheer at, I feel that's more that's more performing and competitions that do view as like competing. Like it's more intense. Our first competition of the year usually is regionals and it's always the Saturday before Halloween. Um, and then after that we have competitions usually on Saturdays, every weekend or every other weekend kind of after that. Until like late February when um, nationals is. When I got hired, that was my goal to the AD, was yeah. I would like to take this team to nationals. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a huge goal for coaches as well. Yeah. So. Coaching this team, I, we've gotten you know two bids, I think, and we just haven't gone yet. So I'm, I, I think that's like, that's always my goal. Nationals. Nationals. We want to get to nationals. Yep. The Rebels gymnastics team is committed to setting goals and improving throughout the season. Let's see what the team is up to and how they plan to seek success this winter. We're, we're down a bit, um, but I've always said I want to work with athletes who will work hard. Like, if you love gymnastics and you work hard, that's who I want to work with. And, and we've got a, a core group of uh, great girls. We've got an awesome uh, senior leader in Melina Ong. Um, I don't know anybody that's worked harder. Uh, so it's been a pleasure to coach her, and she's already been an awesome, invaluable captain, and I know that will keep going through the season. We lost about half of our team, I'd say, and then we got a lot of new um, middle schoolers, which is really nice, so that we have a really young team right now, and I think the season will be really fun. We have our summer practices, and then we also do, like, I tried to do monthly team bondings over the summer before season started. So, the Technique is the thing that takes a little bit more time and repetitions to um, build and, well, really all those things, strength, flexibility, but the strength and flexibility are what we really focus on as a, as a coaching staff of those are things we can control. If you're doing your splits daily and really working it, you'll get more flexible. If you're doing shoulder stretches and we do partner shoulder stretches and a lot of different stretches, you'll, you'll get more shoulder flexibility. Um, so the strength and flexibility we focus on a lot. Uh, we focus a lot on improvement. So it's always a goal of ours with both our varsity and JV to have the team from that first meet to the end meet improve eight to 10 points. Um, and last year I think we got almost to 12 with the varsity and pretty, I think maybe even 13 with the JV. So um, those continue to be our goals. So, this year we're just focusing on rebuilding those good team habits and that mentality towards improvement. And, you know, we're gonna try and beat those teams that are at that same level that we're at and uh, show that we worked to be our best on that day. That's it for this edition of At The Half. Make sure to keep up to date with all your local sports coverage by liking and subscribing to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Thanks for watching. And there it is, Andover leading Rodgers, 39-38 at the half. The Royals will play tough. Starters on the floor for Andover, Masungu, Kupetsky, Pemberton, Johnson, and Nelson. And then Rodgers, Whitcomb, Deluge, Fuller, Watson, and Kazmir Kowski. And Rodgers will have the ball once again, down by one. And Steve, I've got a special need to know by Joe for you tonight. Deluge, three-pointer, good one, good start for the Royals, and he has 13. Starting it up, give him that room outside the perimeter and plenty of way to extend. Nelson, three ball, no good. Rebound Mike Watson, and he'll outlet to Fuller. Fuller's going to bring it into the front court. Swing it out on the right side, Whitcomb. 
They give it up to Watson down low. Left-handed layup. No. Rebound tamped out of there and grabbed by Pemberton. Here's Ben Kopensky. Three-pointer on the way. Got it. Nothing but net. He has 19. Stops and pops from just beyond the perimeter. Right back the other way. Missed by Rogers. Outlet Masungu. He'll go all the way to the hole. Lay it up and in. Go all the way down to the deck. Masungu has six. So explosive when going to that rim. And I'll tell you, he's able to close. Some guys come that fast towards that ball, that backboard, and not able to. So here's a little need to know by Joe for you. We just saw Kopetsky hit a three. We saw Musungo hit that runner and that layup. Here are the top two scores for Andover all time. Sam Musungu now has 1,359 points. Let's make that 1,361 points. And then we'll add another four. Ben Kopetsky is at 1,322 points. How's that for a need to know? They're the all-time leading scorers at Andover. Of course, Musungu will be going to Cornell, play some football there, and Kopetsky will be going to Concordia St. Paul to continue his basketball. Good looking players. There's a shot rattles out of there by Fuller. By the way, during that uh, feature, Kopetsky, <laughs> or excuse me, Masungu, a steal and a score, and now a three made by Pemberton. He has 10, and Andover has come out on fire here in half number two. They're up 49 41, 1606 to go. Quite a start to the half. It is a 10-2 run. Well, Adam Pemberton's been a complimentary player. So in, in the second half, the, the more reps, the more playing time, the more comfortable he looks. As I mentioned, he was shooting 40% from behind three. And uh, 31, he's now in second place on the team with 31 made three-pointers on the season, just behind Kapetsky, who is now north of about 40. You can see a couple of uh, three-point shooters in the stands tonight. And uh, excited as the Huskies try to contend their win streak and move it to five in a row. Meanwhile, for Rodgers, their problem with their four and two record this season is that they've only scored 51 points a game and they've surrendered 68. And they're going against the team Andover, who has put up 81 per game. And the second half has always been kind of a, a tough show here for this Rodgers squad, a young Roger squad that only had two players returning from last year's team. And a correction, 10-3 run to start the half here in the first 154 for Andover. They led it by 139-38. They now lead it 49-41. Kopetsky leading the way with 19, but Masungu now four in each half. Pemberton adds a three a moment ago. He has 10. And see now, Musungo has 1,367 career points. And uh, for Kopensky, he's already up to 1,341. Musungo almost another steal. He had one that led to a layup. It'll be Rogers' ball for the moment, but they have really cranked it up. So Jeremy Habel uh, during the break at halftime certainly motivated his guys. And they're off to a great start here at home in a half number two. Both well, come out man to man. You see that the Huskies like to try to fill that lane. You saw Kopetsky come down as Watson was driving down towards the uh, elbow. Well, it's going to be on Masungu, his second. First team foul on Andover going down to the deck on that play. Colton Kazmir Kozki. And we got a player going to the bench, and that's going to be Fuller. He's going to sit down on the floor as Kane. He had two made threes off the bench, and here is Blake Deluge missing the three. Rebound goes out of bounds, and Andover's going to hang on. They're going to say it went out of bounds off Kazimir Kowalski. Hey, Steve, we talked about Cornell University, where Musungo will be going. Do you remember the Viking who attended Cornell University? I do not. Ed Marinero. How about that? Number 49, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was looking at his stats. And then he left football to go on Hill Street Blues. Kopetsky a three, it's short, rebound tapped around, finally grabbed by Deluge, and then stolen right back and put up an end by Pemberton. Five and a half, 12 in the game, could be 13 in a moment. 
Boy, I like that work. The same thing happened to Pemberton in the first half as Rogers took the ball from him. One of the Rogers players and, and cashed it in for two this time and, and one opportunity as Pemberton. I mean, the more confident out there and the more fluid he becomes, such a contributor and he can help this team advance in the playoffs. 52-41, big lead for Andover at the moment is 11, coming up on 15 to go in the game. Whitcomb down in the corner, Watson. Further out, Deluge goes to the near corner. Whitcomb, missed shot. Good nice. rebound by Nelson. That was crafty. Basungu tried to move it across, grabbed by Kopetsky. Kopetsky swings it over Nelson. He'll drive in. He'll charge. Got that arm out there and knocked down the defender, Zach Kane. I was really kind of glad to see them kind of reward Nelson with that pass in the corner as he moved in. And I don't know that he got that much of him, or, but uh, nonetheless, the call was the charge. He'll sit and coming on, Baraka Tarleton, two points in the game. Nelson sits with three. Two team fouls in Andover, one on Rodgers here. Here's Eli Cespedes, three, no, rebound, grabbed by Masungu. He'll dribble around, Whitcomb, and bring it into the front court. Shovel it into the corner, three-point try by Tate Johnson, no, and the board to Rodgers. There's Kane, gives it up on the right, Whitcomb into Cespedes, back out, Whitcomb's three, pure. Oh, that was a good-looking three. Ball, corner pocket, 11 on the night for Whitcomb. 52-44, Masungu down the lane, got fouled, and he'll get two. And I'm going to guess it's Kane, but we'll see. I haven't been right all night. It is Kane. How about that? Ding, ding, ding. They, they, well, you talk about uh, Baraka Tarleton, an excellent soccer player. I mean, he'll have his choice of colleges to where he wants to go. Uh, plays between... You know, uh, the 18s up and down the field. But Coach uh, Cable told me before the game, uh, you know what? He didn't play at all against Blaine. But I'll tell you, his team chemistry and his ability to cheer on his teams, that, that was worth points that you don't see in the scorebook. And, and he's just that type of team player. There's a tough shot. Got bumped a little bit, still hit at Kane. He has eight. 54-46. A moment ago, Misungu made them both, and he has 10 points. Here's Kopetsky out on top. Throws it into the corner, and it's knocked away. Good defensive play by Blake Deluge to knock it away from the intended receiver, Pemberton, in the near corner. Yeah, you can see the development. Uh, Coach uh, Tackman has you know, developed the players here this year. As I mentioned, just two for Rodgers returning from last year's squad. Kopetsky on top. Drives into the paint, kicks it out. Tarleton three, no, rebound off an arm and out of bounds. And that frustrates Whitcomb. They just got an arm on it and couldn't corral it. 13.37 to go, second half. It was Andover by one at the break. They have a little breathing room up by eight in the ball. Masungu into the paint, fade away from 10. No, rebound grabbed by Kazmir Koski. He'll dribble ahead. Get it out in the corner. Cut her down the lane, Whitcomb, nice play. Whitcomb, five and a half, 13 in the game. Four in a row for Rodgers. Here's a chance for Von Strenge. Gets his own long rebound, free throw line J. Off no good. Kazmir Koski the board. Needs a little help. Whitcomb then gets it back and dribbles into the front. Down in the corner, it's Kane a three. Look at that. Kane, third made three. He has 11 tonight. 54-41, 7-0 run by Rodgers. And Kopetsky answers the other way. Five and a half, 21 in the game. He just needs a little bit of air, a little crack in the door, and he manages to find himself in those layups. How about Deluge with a three? His third of the game, second of the half, give him 16 points. It's a two-point game. But it's a three-point party the second half for Rodgers. Kopetsky, short, rebound tapped around. Grabbed there by Pemberton, no. And the board to Cespedes for Rodgers. Outlet Blake Deluge into the front court. Whitcomb right side. Cespedes in the paint, turnaround short. 
And the board to Kopetsky. Didn't look like he had his feet below him on that one. Long three looked out. Kopetsky says, hey, you're having a three-point party and you haven't even called on me lately. And he brings his three. He has 23 in the game. Kazmierkowski to the block, turned away, tipped out of bounds. Pemberton got a hand on it. Subs are going to come into the game. 11.52 to go. Is that five three-pointers for Kopetsky? Yep. I think that's what I have and leads the team. The season now with uh, 41 three points made. Whitcomb, top of the key, left of the lane, stops out in the corner. Deluge along the baseline. Mm, nice. nice look to Watson. He'll lay it in. Boy, I like the motion and that ball movement by Rogers. Masungu left to the lane, drives in, puts it up, and he drew the foul, went into traffic. And it is going to go on Watson. That'll be his first. 13 fall on Rodgers, just two on Andover. Fouls have not been a gigantic factor in the game. Sam Masungu at the line. He's two, two, two for two with 10 points tonight. Yes, sir. As we look at the last outing for the Huskies, they put up a 74 56 win over Rob, Rob, Robinsdale, Armstrong, Kopetsky. A modest 18 added 10 rebounds and eight assists. Musungo had 10, Pemberton 12. Tarleton sits down, Dennett Key on the floor for Andover. And Musungo made them both perfect from the line tonight, 12 points. I'm sure he's done with that after you just mentioned perfect from the line, Steve. Yeah, blame it on me, the jinx. Whitcomb left of the lane. Now out on top, tipped away from behind. Masungu the quick hands, but Rodgers is going to hang on. Of course, the Huskies may be giving the Minnesota Gophers basketball team free throw lessons. I noticed that they were second to last in the country today in the, um, from the free throw line. It's been a tough year. Deluge further out. Here's Fuller. Deluge dribbles back. Now puts it on the floor. All the way in. Put it up. Missed the shot. Watson the board. He'll fire it out. That Whitcomb three, no. And then the rebound, grabbed by Rodgers and put up and in by Fuller. He has four. He'll stay after it on the boards. Kane stayed active, got that loose ball, and distributed the dime. Masungu down the lane, trying to give it up, and does. Shot missed there. No foul. Denick, he wanted one. Rodgers right back at it. In the corner, here's Kane. Missing it, Watson the board. <laughs> Just took the ball right away from Van Stringy and put it up. He said, I'll take that. Thank you very much. One point game, 10-20 to go, second half. Rogers right back in this thing. Kopetsky spinning top of the key, and the foul's <laughs> going to go on Whitcomb. That'll be number three. First Royal with three. Tough to not call that one as he extended his hand defensively, essentially caught Ben Kepsky. <laughs> Kapetsky right in the draw near the neck. So easy call for the official. Whitcomb's third. Back in is Nelson for Andover. Kapetsky, quick three, got it. Three made threes in each half. Kopetsky putting on a show. Back the other way, blocked out of there by Landon Nelson, grabs the board. Kopetsky ahead to Misungu. Layup. Transition well that time by the Huskies after the block by Dennegy. Watson further out. Driving oh. in, getting the bucket. Is he going to get the foul as well? And one. Yeah. How about that? Boy, if you see that block again by Dennegy, I was going to coach. Abel before the game. This is the end one here. Good job. Good, strong finish. Dang. Kasperkowski to complete the end one, and he does. He has nine. This is a great game. Spurts and bursts from both teams. Rogers hanging in there. Kopetsky tries to get into the lane. Free throw line. Nice look down low. Up and in. And the bucket to Denicky. Assist to Kopetsky. Good dime, great hands, and a great pivot. Here's Rogers, nice feed. Watson, the layup. 
off the feet by Mix. Watson having a nice half. He has 10 in the game. Quickly the other way. Nelson three ball. No, long board. Grabbed by Watson. Acrobatic rebound. Nine to go in the game. Boy, once Watson gets his mitts on that ball, there's no one that's going to take it away from him. In fact, he's taking it away from others here tonight. What a fast-moving second half. 8.53 to go, and both teams have put on some tremendous offensive displays, but also some great defensive play, including the block by Denegy. Mix Miranda. got trapped in the corner, wanted to foul on Masungu, didn't get it, but Rodgers did get the timeout at that moment and as joe mentioned 853 to go but rogers really hanging around and you look at this andover team and the great guard play and the athleticism and they get up and down the floor and they have depth the one thing the andover huskies lack is size mm -hmm. is that they don't have a true big guy in the middle and the nose and plays big and they have others uh tarleton has some length but they they don't have the six five 6'6 six, six guy down low and uh, Andover's got to get up and down the floor and play outstanding defense and give Rodgers credit they have been very very uh, athletic here tonight and Mike Watts has been a huge key 10 points but a lot of big rebounds for Rodgers. I was just going to say Steve he's that presence for Rodgers big thick guy man he's got paws like a bear he's taken away that yeah. uh, picnic basket from anyone at any given time but only that he, he doesn't give it up soft hands inside he's always in the right spot but man he's he's got a physical presence inside he is a good player good footwork down low watson for rogers there's a six four senior and and a sturdy player as well is not going to get pushed around down low. Whitcomb left of the lane. Tried to get it down low. Stolen away by Andover. Turnover by Rogers. Here comes Kopetsky. Kopetsky puts it on the floor. Knocked back by Whitcomb. Kept his dribble. He'll try the three in the corner. That short. Long board out of there. Grabbed by Fuller. Here comes Rogers. Off on the wing. Down in the corner. It's Mix. Long two. No. Rebound. Cespedes back up and in. He got in for great rebounding position. Wow. One Pick point up. game coming up on eight to go. Masungu the other way. Blocked out of bounds by Fuller. Andover will hang on. Pemberton's going to come on the floor. Landon Nelson will sit. Remember, Landon has three fouls in the game and just two points. Kopetsky leading the way with 27. He has three made threes in the half, 11 overall points. That one grabbed in the corner by Kopetsky. He'll dribble out of there, get a little help from Masungu. Far corner, Pemberton gets the three right off the bench. Can I, he can be the X factor for the Huskies here in the postseason. He is shooting a smooth stroke. Nine and a half, 16 in the game. Rodgers right back at it, 7.40 to go. In the corner, Whitcomb. They get it down low. Cespedes, mix down the baseline, up, no. What do we got here? I think they may have, did they call a foul on? Yeah, they may have called a foul on Pemberson. And they did, his first. Or team foul on Andover. Team fouls are even. And that, that was kind of a late call. And Trey Mix will be at the line. He hasn't scored. Boy, these teams are playing at not only a fast tempo, but a very effective tempo. They're, they're converted. They're not turning the ball over a lot. And then on transition, good, clean breaks. And uh, they're able to close. 71 68, 727 to go. Half number two, Rodgers hanging around. Mix didn't get that one, and it's finally grabbed there by Denneke. And over into the front court in black, or soon to be into the front court. Kopetsky into the lane, kicks it out. And that was Begali missing the shot. And over controls. Pemberton another three, short. And that finally grabbed by Fuller. They'll give it up. Mix. Into the front court. Pemberton gets it back. 
Left to the lane. Swings it across, stolen away. Stolen away by Pemberton. Now to Masungu, goes up, lays it in. Sam Masungu. He has 12 and a half, 16 in the game. And over by five. This is Kane. Kane tried to get it down low. It's on the deck. Cespedes, jump ball. Andover's going to get it. They are going to get it. Well, and now coming on the floor is Deluge and Watson, two key guys for the Rogers Royals. Well, in the last time Don Rogers threw a cross-court pass, you could see Pemberton was kind of sitting on that. Got it out to Musungu, and again, another case of running it and closing on that transition for Musungu. 16 for tonight's four. Musungu. I'll get it to the wing end. Kopetsky, 27 tonight. Skips it all the way across. Here's Pemberton again. Third made three in the half, fourth of the game. Rogers right back at it. Watson in the paint, kicks it out. And that is Deluge missing the shot. 76, 68. Danger zone for Rogers. Kopetsky a three rattles out. Watson the board. Rogers will hand it off. And coming back the other way is Fuller. Fuller down on the deck. Back out on top. And that one no good. Fuller got bumped from behind on the rebound. Missed three-pointer by Kazmir Kotsky, but Fuller got the board. Is that going to be on Pemberton? Nope, Sam Musunga. Pemberton, meanwhile, season high for him this season coming into tonight. He had 17 against Coon Rapids, and he has shattered that. He has 19 is what I have, Steve. Chase Pemberton. Get a Pemberton. Big night tonight. 12 and a half. Both free throws missed there by Fuller. And it's still 76-69. Or he did get one, 76-69. 5.28 to go in the corner, Pemberton. Masungu into the paint. Tried to go down low. That would have been a nifty pass to Denneke. But it's knocked away by Rogers. Right idea. And now Kopetsky will inbound. Roger stays in that man-to-man. Bagali catches, gets it back to Kopetsky. Wing left, all the way across. Pemberton in the corner, three. No rebound, back up, off, no good. Finally grabbed by Deluge. He throws it away. Kopetsky on the break. He'll go all the way in. Miss it, tapped around. And that's going to be a, a goaltending. Goal, yeah, it's got to be a goaltend there on Denneke. That was up in the cylinder. 5-0-1 to go in the game. Rodgers up by seven, but Rodgers the ball. And over up by seven, Rodgers the ball. There's Denneke. He's trying to get a throw down on that rebound, but the ball is still in the cylinder. Whitcomb, nice move. Missed the shot, followed it, and got fouled. Boy, Whitcomb wanted that. Ah. And one, but he'll get two right here. Well, I got to tell you, I know the coaches have been pushing to you know, improve that defense, but both of these teams in the second half have been working their tail off, battling underneath the baskets. Physical game, and uh, Whitcomb goes to the line, and he's had a tough task tonight trying to cover Kopetsky. He has 13 points. That one rattles home. First made free throw there for Easton Whitcomb. And their 103 to 78 loss to Spring Lake Park. Whitcomb had 14, Kane 13, and Deluge 23. Got them both. 76, 71, still doable for Rodgers. And over the ball. They came out quick, 10 3 run to start the half. But Rodgers battled back. Pemberton again, no. Long rebound grab there by Begali. He'll keep it alive. Put it up off the glass and in. Did he call it? Who knows? But he has five. The church was closed, but the bank was open. 78-71 down the lane. Deluge draws the foul. And he'll go to the line. That'll be the seventh on Andover, so they're over the limit. By the way, that's Pemberton's second. Seven team foul on Andover, four on Rodgers. 
And Blake Deluge, 16 points, make it 17. Man. And they're getting production. Four players now in double figures for Rodgers. Yeah, he, he's a good-looking player and just a junior. 18 points to lead them. 15 for Whitcomb. There's Sam Masungu out on top, trying to drive. Nice look down low. Oh, he ripped the pass inside to Denick. He, he caught it and put it up and in. That was a laser of a oh. pass, and you had better have some great mitts to be able to retain that pass, and Denick he did. I think he's got six on the night. He does. All have come inside the lane. Denick, as I was talking before the game, the head coach, Jeremy, and I just said he seems like he plays bigger than he is at 6'4". And he's, he's starting to excel and push it, and you're seeing that with certain players for Andover, and that's what they need to really elevate that play because, boy, they've got, uh, you know, Park Center yet. They've got another trip with Maple Grove. On the inbound, nice cut to the bucket. Denneke now has 8, 82-73. And over by nine, driving in, shot put up and off by Fuller. No. And we got a foul on Andover. Well, Andover averaging 81 a game, now has 82. And as they try to continue their win streak now to five, but Rodgers is giving him quite the battle. Yeah, they, they have played well tonight. Fuller at the line, he has five points. And it's good. Right now that Andover gets that juice and gets that flow going because they're playing a team next at Maple Grove that values each of their possessions. And they'll make it work. Currently, I, last time I'd seen in the class four ring is their number two in the state is Maple Grove. A make and a miss, eight point game. And over the ball, 3.34 to go. They work it around. Pemberton, another three, got it. But Boy, he's had a big half. Four made threes. And but Denneke on the assist, got that ball in the lane and kicked it out to Pemberton. 15 points in the half, 22 in the game, missed by Rodgers. On the break, Masungu on the left, spots up for three. That's off, no good. Rebound tapped out of bounds, and it's going to go out of bounds off. Cam Bagali and Rodgers will get it back, but they're in trouble down by 11 with 3.09 to go in the game. Yep, and this is where oh. some of the uh, underclassmen and what have you just maybe getting a little tired. And uh, right now, the Huskies are kicking it into that next gear. Here's Whitcomb into the paint, back out. Deluge now on the right. This is Kane. Kane double team, stolen by Masungu. He'll go up, lay it in. Sam Masungu having quite a half. And he has 14 in the half, 18 in the game. 87-74. Andover pulling away, 240 to go. Almost another steal. Rodgers barely hangs on. This is Kazmierkowski, now to Watson. Layup. Watson's had a nice night. He has 12. That was a great pass by Whitcomb, a dish from the perimeter, seeing the cutting Watson, and he lays in that soft left hand. 12 for him, as you mentioned on the night, and a quick timeout with uh, a lead now of 87-76. You gotta be happy with, hey, it may not be the best defense. Here's head coach Jeremy Havel as you get ready for that run with the final eight games. But you kind of love how fluid the offense looks. And some of these players stepping up tonight, including Pemberton. Pemberton now with 22, and I think I have him for five threes of his own. And I think Petsky has perhaps five threes as well. The other one stepping up tonight has been Luke Denneke. He's not only got the eight points, showing some great hands down in the lane on those dark passes. But he's also been getting some great offensive rebounds and then a couple of block shots as well. He also kicked out a pass to Pemberton from the lane on uh, 
the last conversion on a three for Pemberton. So with those guys elevating their play this time of the year, that makes the team that much more dangerous. For the Huskies, they came in 11 and five with 2.29 to go right now, a nine point lead. Andover came out of the gate in half number two and it looked like they were gonna blow Rogers off the floor, but they were able to hang in there, but too much Andover defensively. Pemberton, look out, got it, another three pointer. Pemberton, five main threes in the half. 18 total points in this half. What a night for Pemberton, and that's gonna do it. 90 to 76, 208 to go. Kopetsky down on the deck, mix on top of him. And we had a timeout by Andover, and Jeremy Hamel's gonna talk about it, but man, Chase Pemberton, six overall made threes tonight. He had seven at the half, and now he has 25 points in the game. So Chase Pemberton, the 6'3 junior, adding some scoring punch here tonight. And you mentioned it, Joe, a uh, huge key to add another potential big score. We know Landon Nelson can fill it up. The X factor is really what you're looking for in Pemberton, getting so comfortable, making those plays, hitting those threes. He's in the zone. He's getting that pass and a shooting pocket as well and able to launch it and Denicky the other as well adding to that depth two minutes to go and over up now by 14 in control in this one down in the corner here's Pemberton they lob it out in front Masungu Sam Masungu is going to put it on the floor drive in get followed by Mix and that'll be the fifth on Rogers they have a couple to give here before we get into the bonus. You can see the foul here as Musungu explodes to the lane. That's a reach, 101. On the inbound, Landon Nelson catching bucket. Quiet night for Landon Nelson. He has four points, but he adds a physical presence. 92-76. Three ball. Yeah, nice three-pointer. Kaz Murkowski with his first three of the night. And he has 12 in the game. Kopetsky. And now Pemberton. And then Masungu. Was that an over and back? No, nope. it was a foul. They're going to call it a foul. And that's going to be on Deluge, his second. Six on Rodgers, 120 to go in the game. 92-79. That's a lot of scoring in 36 minutes. Boy, that's a lot of running. Yeah, absolutely. And wait till we get the shot clock next year. Pemberton now. Sam Masungu is going to dribble out of there and get followed by Mix. Again, that'll be number two. And he'll go to the line, shoot the one and one with 103 to go in the game. And as you mentioned, big one on the road at Andover, or at Maple Grove for Andover on Wednesday night. Then they return home a week from Wednesday against Anoka on the 8th. And then they get Champlin Park here on Friday night, the 10th. A one on the road at Maple Grove and then two home games against rivals Anoka and Champlin Park. Sam Masungu to make. And I didn't jinx him. He is now five for five from the line, 19 points. And you gotta have that as you get closer to the playoffs, even though they're eight games away, but still you wanna get into a feel and thank you very much, you missed that one. I'm gonna blame you. Sure. Because you said you're know, really Sam. gonna need that and I, I think that was. <laughs> <laughs> 19 though oh, for Sam yeah. single 102 to go in the game and over in command. Meanwhile, Rogers, uh, they head home. They take on Robbinsdale Armstrong on Wednesday night. Rogers, just beautiful facilities. That shut up and in, off by Whitcomb, a little frustrated. Masungu's going to dribble out of there and get fouled by Deluge on the reach. That'll be his third. And more free throws for Sam Masungu. 
Well, you got to be happy with Rodgers and the progress here tonight. No, it was just four and 12, but four players in double figures for the Roger Royals tonight. Steve, you just mentioned that schedule coming up. Robinsdale Armstrong, then they're at Good Grief Park Center. They get them twice, uh, along with uh, Osseo. Hosting Osseo, then they're at Tatino Grace. Tatino Grace, eight and one in conference play. Coming into tonight, and then it's Anoka. And he got them both. Huskies, meanwhile, Maple Grove hosting Anoka on the 8th, and they're at Champlain Park on the 10th. Kazmer Kowski and with take the And Elk River on the 15th, and at Coon Rapids on the 17th. And we have another foul, 29.9. So Colton Kazmer Kowski has had quite a half. A couple of made threes, nine points, 15 total in the game. Ben Kopetsky, he had 16 at the break. Knocks one down there. Now 28 in the game. He's had five made threes. 29.9. That one rattles around and drops as well. 97 to 82, Andover. Deluge, quick three, no. Rebound mix back out. Kazmierkowski, no, makes another board. Deluge, he'll try a three. That one, down and out. 8.2 to go, and over ball. Well, they're gonna win it, and they're gonna win their fifth straight, go to nine and one in conference play, and 12 and five overall. And that will do it. Andover wins at home tonight, but Joe, it certainly was an easy tip of the cap to the Rogers Royals. They really battled hard and made them work. They did. It was probably to the last four minutes of this game yep. when it really started to open up, but they were exchanging punches the whole time, exchanging fast break transitions. And uh, of course, the Huskies have three players with 20 plus points tonight. That's tough to build. And uh, they are just a three spot away from the century mark here tonight. And we'll get a look here at the player of the game. And it could be several players of the game tonight, but it will go to Ben Kopetsky, who really set the tempo in the first half. Yeah, no doubt about it. And what, what Ben does is he drives, he's so effective at the rim. And then of course the catch and shoot three for Ben Kopetsky on his way to 16 first half points, 29 overall in the game tonight. His season average is 26. You see another drive scoop score uh, from Ben. Just so fun to watch him. 25 for Chase Pemberton. He had quite a night from outside the arc. 21 for Sam Masungu. So three players with 20 plus points on the way to the 97-82 victory tonight. So Andover rolls on. And they got a big one at Maple Grove on Wednesday night. That should be well, fun. And I think they got some confidence build uh, in some of those players below in Pepperton. As I mentioned, X-Factors along with Denicky as well. Those two guys played extremely well tonight. They'll need them in Maple Grove to try to extend that win streak to six. Yeah, and I, I doubt uh, Maple Grove is going to give up 97. <laughs> That'll be a bit of a low-scoring affair on Wednesday night in the Grove. Always fun to work with the QCTV crew and Joe Rulin. I'm Steve Thompson. There it is. Our final score and over rolls at home over Rogers, 97 to 82. Good night.